In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the uh, Google Earth Engine map function in order to uh, fully utilize the Earth Engine computing power. Uh, this is something that you must master in order to do uh, uh, parallel processing. So um, let's get started first. Let's go to the website to download the noble example we're going to use. And you can go to tutorials.gmap.org and then click uh, image collection mapping over image collection and then upper right corner click the download icon and then download this one to your computer i'm going to save to my examples folder here and just click save after that uh, you can open an anaconda prompt and you can uh, activate the environment so i'm going to just conda activate uh, ge if you have not um uh, install uh, Anaconda or Gmap. Uh, you can follow my previous video how to install uh, the package. So you can go to my uh, YouTube channel and then uh, scroll down to see uh, spatial data management. So all the videos are, are here. And uh, next, I'm going to uh, after you activate the environment, we can just type Jupyter Notebook, hit enter, and it should open uh, your browser. Uh, with a Jupyter Notebook and from here uh, we're going to navigate into the documents directory and then just uh, click the mapping over image collection okay so here is the uh, example and on the left side here uh, you can see the table of contents we have six sections here in this notebook and we're going to go through one by one you can click the link here to go to the Earth Engine documentation uh, webpage to look at uh, more information. And so um, mapping, uh, keep that in mind, mapping here is different from the traditional meaning of uh, mapping. We are not going to create a map or plot the map. This mapping here, the term, uh, term, uh, terminology is similar to the looping in a programming uh, language. So uh, it's basically a loop. And what we're trying to do here is to repeatedly doing something. Uh, and uh, just to give you an, a simple example, let's say um, you want to maybe figure out the population uh, for each uh, state, right? So for example, here in the US, we have counties level and state level. And so if you, if you know the population for each county, then you can calculate the, uh, the uh, sum, the total, aggregate all together then to get the sum for a specific state right but in here we, we have 50 states let's for example and uh, you want to calculate the population for each individual state right and you don't want to do like manually just run like 50 times you want be you want to find a way actually we can do for one state and then just automatically do the looping so that in that way you don't have to repeatedly uh, doing something manually and this is the power of Google's engine. Uh, the map function is basically allow you to easily uh, do something repeatedly. So next, uh, let's go through the example. Uh, first, we want to uh, import the libraries and also uh, create the map. When you are create a creating the map, uh, it's also going to authenticate uh, Google's engine. So if you have not uh, authenticated before, uh, you will need to log in and authenticate. Next, um, this here, uh, one of the first example here uh, is to basically uh, get to know the function. So uh, essentially the map um, function, uh, you need to pass in a parameter and that parameter is a function. So I'm going to go, go through the examples here uh, before we get into more complicated one. So in this case, um, in uh, Python, when you're trying to define a function is uh, df and then the name of the function. Uh, so here you can pass in uh, a parameter in this case we are trying to for example minus 1000 uh, just a simple example so if you give me a number i'm going to minus that number by 1000 and then return the results okay so this is just one line of code in here and keep that in mind uh, in google's engine uh, all the things that we're doing here are server-side objects okay so this is different from the python programming a traditional programming like uh, on the client side and this is why you see here it's a slightly different you don't use num directly minus uh, 1000 you use this one to convert this number to an earth engine object and then you subtract a 1000 so everything here these are all 
Earth engine operations. It's not the regular Python uh, uh, mathematical uh, operators. If you want to figure out like uh, what kind of function can you apply to an Earth engine object, you can go to the Earth engine documentation and then click the reference. So from here, uh, click Find Libraries, right? And the one we are looking for is ee doc number. So if you can scroll down to look at this one, ee doc number. And so the one we used earlier is subtract, right? So if you want to figure out what kind of function or methods that uh, each object has, uh, all you need to just look, go through the list, and then you should be able to find out, right? So you can actually use the subtract to subtract a number. So and this is exactly what we are doing in here, ee doc number. So we convert the regular uh, number to an earth engine number and then you can apply the subject uh, by 1000 so this is exactly what we're trying to do and then we can return the result and this is a function after you execute it's not going to do anything so the function is not being executed until you call the function so next we were just going to call the function as you can see from the function uh, definition right this is the name and then what you need is passing a parameter so this for example a uh, minus 1000 and we want to pass in the parameter, they say 2000. So 2000 minus 1000, uh, you want to get 1000, right? So you get the result and then you can print out the result. Uh, make sure you use dot get info, otherwise you, you, don't, you won't be able to see the output. So I can just do this one. And then I can see this here. This is more like a, a JSON a string. And uh, if you just want to get the number, you always need to use dot get info uh, because the result here, this one is the earth engine object uh, in order to see what's be inside the object you need to use docket info so in this case we get 1000 okay so this is a simple example how you can utilize a function to uh, do some calculation so next this is where the magic happens uh, we're going to use the map function so uh, keep that in mind this is different from the traditional um, um, python like regular uh, uh, mathematical operation uh, the map here is basically like just like a for loop but it's a for loop uh, on the server side next let's use this example uh, we're going to create a sequence so the sequence here is a uh, uh, number from 2000 all the way to 2010 and then again this one is earth engine object uh, you need to use the docket info to get the result and as you can see from 2000 all the way to 2010 next how about this um if you not already know how to use the minus 1000, I want to do that for the entire list, right? I want to minus uh, 1000 from each item within the list. So how can we do that? Um, if you're using traditional Python, you might need to do a for loop, like for something in something and then minus. But if you use Google's engine, it's just one simple function. It's called dot map. So what does this one really do is that this one is a list and it, it can be a, le a regular list, uh, it can be an image collection, or it can be a freezer collection. So basically, within this one, you have a number of items, and then uh, use the dot map. Within the parameter, you pass in the function, just the function de definition, you don't pass in anything else. So in this case, right, just this person, don't pass in uh, something uh, uh, with the parentheses, it is not going to work. So the function is accepting one parameter. So the one the parameter come from uh, the, each item in here. So in this case, right, we have um, eleven numbers in here, and we're going to apply this function. So this function is going to take one item and then apply this function. So earlier, right, as you can see, uh, it's minus one thousand. So two thousand minus one thousand, uh, you get one thousand, right? And uh, two thousand one minus one thousand, you get one thousand one, and so on and so forth. If you see from here there's no looping so the map function essentially is a loop and it's going to apply the function to every item and then get the results so the results will also be a list and we can just execute here uh, you will see the output very simple so this is the one that you must use because it's just so powerful if you want to figure out like what, what you can apply to uh, how you can use the map function uh, so for example that one i showed you earlier is a list right ee dot list and if you go here, you will see this one, e dot list dot map, right? So you can apply a map function to a list. Uh, map on algorithm over a list uh, is based, uh, expected to take an object and return an object. And so essentially, 
uh, each item uh, at the end is going to return you the result as a list and this is exactly what it is so essentially what you need to do in order to use the map function is to have a list and then you map the list but you can also have a function uh, put inside the, as a parameter and that's it uh, very simple the next uh, I'm going to show you how you can sometimes use the so-called an anonymous function and this one is also very useful because if you look at this function here essentially just one line of code right you can directly return uh, you don't really have to have a parameter you can just like uh, return and then uh, you don't need this right so I can delete this one it's the same um, you, you basically you take a number and then you subtract and then you return the results so if your function is like simple one only is one line of code uh, you don't really need to define a function and then pass in here in Python there's a so-called a lambda function uh, this is called anonymous function and these three lines of code in here is the same as the one we used earlier uh, the same idea so first we create a list right a sequence and then again this is server-side object and then once we have the list we can apply the map function so compare this one to this one here so this one you you have used the minus one minus 1000 we already defined a function but you don't have to so you can use lambda uh, x so the lambda function is uh, formulated in this way lambda and then the x this one represent the item one of the item from the list right so it can it doesn't have to be called x it can be called anything you can call it y you can call it g or, or i j k whatever but uh once you have this one later when you reference uh, you need to use the same uh, same size so x that means okay so within the uh, the years list right over here we have 11 items and we're going to get one item and this item we're going to convert the item to on earth engine number and then we, we subtract 1000 and this is the result going to be returned right so you get 2000 and then so 2000 minus 1000 you get 1000 and then goes to the uh, next item uh, this one right now becomes 2001 and 2001 minus subtract 1000 equal to 1001 and so on and so forth and after that you can just return the result so if you use the map function the result will also be a list as you can see this is much easier uh, essentially you only have two lines of code right but uh, if you define a function you need to have two lines of code and then I use the map function so you need to have three lines this is especially uh, useful uh, if your function is simple just one line then you use this one is a prefer much easier but if your function is more complicated uh, multiple lines then you you cannot use this one you need to define a function and then so they can pass the function into the list okay so this is a simple example just using numbers next we are going to do some real computation right uh, we're going to deal with earth engine uh, image and image collection uh, in this section in this example i'm going to show you here how to actually to filter the image and then how to uh, apply something do some analysis or whatever you want to do to each image uh, within that image uh, collection so first uh, let's define an roi and this is uh, basically a location within uh, my city uh, Knoxville uh, Tennessee we are going to use the lens set uh, service refractance data and we're going to filter by this ROI uh, again you can change this location to any uh, uh, longitude and latitude to any other location uh, then you can you can basically just need to modify this one and everything else you can still use the same one and we're going to filter the lens set uh, image collection and then filter basically we're trying to find out uh, all the images um, intersecting this uh, location and also filter by date <clears throat> and this one here we're going to use the imagery from uh, 2019 so 2019 January the 1st and then to 2020 January the 1st so this one is inclusive this one is exclusive that means uh, in this case we are trying to find all the images or the choir in 2019 covering this area covering in my city and then so you want to end up with a bunch of images and ideal situation uh, you also want to maybe uh, sort by cloud cover because <clears throat> uh, satellite data uh, optical remote sensing uh, you want to end up with a lot of clouds and you can apply the dot sort 
uh, by cloud cover. So cloud cover is one of the image properties. Again, if you want to know, for example, how to use a Google Search Engine image collection, you can come back to here and then you can uh, find out, for example, e uh, image collection. Uh, you should be able to see all the functions you can use. Uh, so I use the filter, for example, uh, filter date, uh, filter uh, bounds. You can also filter metadata. Also, there's one called uh, sort, right? So Earth Engine basically, uh, you just need to figure out what you want to do and then you can put all the functions as a sequence. So you apply one and then one and then continue until you get uh, the results. <clears throat> so next, I'm going to execute this code block. And as you can see, we have 17 images. So this is within our expectation because uh, Lane said the uh, revisit frequency is 16 days. So every month you get roughly uh, two images <clears throat> and uh, 12 months you get uh, 24. So it's going to be less than uh, 24. Uh, we get 17 images, right? So once we have these 17 images for uh, from 2019 for this city, then uh, we can maybe just, uh, just look at the first image. Uh, because we already sort by cloud cover, this image is expected to <clears throat> be a good one because uh, um, it's like this cloud cover uh, image for that year. What you need to do is to apply the function called uh, doc first. Doc first means uh, you have a bunch of images. Uh, so think about in your uh, computer, you have a folder, and within that folder, you have 17 images. And we're just going to look at the first one. So uh, you can apply the function called doc first. Again, you can go to image doc, uh, collection and you can find out the function here uh, image uh, image doc collection doc, uh, first and then uh, you can assign this one to available also you can use the doc get info to uh, look at all the metadata information for that image so if you use the doc get info it's going to print out a long list of items so uh, each band it has different data type and also minimum maximum you also have the, for example, the uh, coordinates for the uh, system uh, footprint. Um, this is long list. If you want to be a, uh, want a simplified one, you can use the GMAP function called image uh, props, and then pass in the image, and then use the dog get info. So uh, this is a much simplified one. Uh, it doesn't give you a long list, but uh, give you all the essential one uh, in here. So the first parameter here is called cloud cover uh, 0.06. So basically less than one percent uh, is cloud so this is basically definitely a good image if you want to know more functions about the gmap uh, you can go to the uh, website gmap.org and then from here you can just search any function so uh, for example image uh, earlier i show you is image uh, props <laughs> it might take a couple seconds uh, basically to uh, build the index you can also go to uh, the api reference uh, in here and then uh, comments. So from here, you can also on the right here, uh, you will be able to see the list of functions. So it's the one here, image, uh, image props. Okay, so this one uh, again, and then you can, for example, pass in the parameter. You can also change the uh, uh, date format, right? You can you can do the search, and you should be able to find you all the functions. So you just search, you click one. You can also look at the examples. So some of the noble examples are using this function. Okay, so next, uh, let's uh, add the image to the map. Before we do that, we can also look at, for example, all the images, right? Uh, we can let, look at all the cloud cover. So if you just, uh, the entire image collection, uh, aggregate array, and then this is the property we wanna look at. So think about a spreadsheet, right? You have uh, each row represent one item in your list, and then you have a column. Each column may have a number representing cloud cover. So we're going to use the aggregate function. Basically, you want to extract the entire column and then use the docket info to get the results. So uh, we have 17 images, right? And then because we already sort them by cloud cover. So the first one is a really nice one because uh, the cloud cover is really low, less than uh, 1%. It's 0.06%. So uh, this is nice one. Once we have the image, right? We Earlier, we already assigned the image to available uh, here. Then we can load this one to the map. Um, again, you can set the visualization uh, parameters and then just use add layer, passing how you want to visualize. This is the name of the layer. And then uh, you can use the to center the object. Okay, so this is what you get, you center the object. And if you zoom in, 
Okay. This is the map. Um, this is the image. Uh, if you click here, uh, you can also change this one. Uh, you can also change the color if you want. I can visualize. Uh, I can also, for example, change the color to maybe uh, six, five, four. Apply. Uh, it's going to change to uh, natural color composite. Okay, so this is how you load the first uh, image, right? And if you see from this example, right now we have 17 images, but we only um, select the first one. And if I give you a task, right, this is only 2019. How about this? I want the images, I want the base image each year from 2013 to 2020. So every year, give me the best image that cover this area or cover any other location. Can you do that? Um, if you don't know how to use the map function, uh, probably you're going to do that manually. So you need to maybe go to here and then uh, manually change this one uh, to 2013, 2014, right? Uh, so on and so forth. That's not a good way to do programming. So uh, this is how you can utilize the Google Earth Engine uh, map function. And I'm going to show you here the example. First, I'm going to define the uh, uh, ROI. Again, we're going to use it the same. If you want your city, you can change the coordinates. Then uh, I'm going to define the function here. Uh, the function name is called base image. And first you need to, basically you need to pass in a year, right? Um, so if you pass me uh, 2013, for example, this one here is going to become 2013, January 1st. And this is the start day. The end day will be, um, <clears throat> you can use the function called dot or the funds and then one basically uh, give me a date and I'm going to advance the date by you can have set a unit you can advance by one year one month or one day so in this case I'm going to advance by one year that means uh, this one will become uh, if you pass me 2013 you will become 2014 January 1st right and you can use these two days to pass into the filter date function so the filter date means okay 2013 January 1st 2014 January 1st again this one is excluded so that's why you always need to uh, add one if you don't know how to use the e doc date uh, you can again come back to here e doc date and then doc advance uh, you will see from here you have a delta and then also unit so delta is one right we advance by one but uh, the unit can be a uh, second a minute hour, day, week, or month, so uh, very flexible. Once we have the image collection, we're going to filter by the ROI and also by date. Uh, we're also going to sort by cloud cover. Once we sort by cloud cover, we're going to get the first image. So we can apply doc first and then return the image. So this function here essentially is what we did earlier, like manually, like goes through line by line and then uh, once you get the collection and then you get this one but if you define the function then we can use the map uh, to automatically do that for every year as long as you have the data right so once we have the function then this is where the magic happens first you need to create a list of a year think about like you want to create a time series of images right you have the start year you have the end year you can also uh, um, if you want to just specify a specific month, you can do that as well. But in this example, I'm just going to assume that we're going to just get the best image each year. If you want the best image for each month, uh, you can also do that if you want. So uh, e doc list doc sequence, and then uh, we're going to pass in the start year and end year. So the start year is 2013, end year is 2020 because we are using the lens set uh, service reflectance. And uh, then set eight only starts from uh, 2013. So if you want earlier years, uh, you need to use a lens set uh, five or lens set uh, seven. So, and for simplification, we're just going to use a uh, lens set eight and start from 2013 to 2020. Once we create a sequence, then we can print out uh, the sequence. So simple, <clears throat> 2013 to 2020. And that's it. Once you have the sequence, then you can apply uh, the function just use doc map right so this is a list uh, this doc map that means we're going to repeatedly do that for every item so the first one here is 2013 i'm going to find the best image for 2013 and then uh, go over again uh, for 2014 2015 and 
So Google Search Engine, why it is so powerful? Because uh, each function, each item does not rely on others. They can be separate. Uh, they can basically send to different servers to be executed and then return the result. If something like the second item relies on the first one, then you cannot, it's more difficult to actually do the parallel processing. So this is why it's so fast because uh, each item is computed on a different server and it, it, the result are returned back and then aggregate uh, to you. So again, this is the list dot map and then passing the name of the function. Don't pass in the parameter, okay? Uh, it's not going to work because the parameter come from the item. And just hit uh, execute. Okay, base image. Okay, we are having execute this one yet. Execute, execute, execute. And now we have uh, assigned the result to a new variable. So the new variable is going to have the same length as list list. So each year, you only have one image. Even to see how many images, uh, you can use the doc size dot get info doc size is uh, a function applied to an image collection so you can come back to here and then use doc size okay and this is how you can figure out how many items in the image collection uh, you can print out okay eight right so in here we have eight years one two three four five six seven eight so we have eight images in the collection <laughs> once we have the collection then you can um <clears throat> do some aggregation to get uh, all the uh, image property for example if you want to see the cloud cover for all the images uh, you can use the dot uh, aggregate keep that in mind uh, this one here return back is a list okay it's not an image collection so if you don't uh, convert this one back to an image collection you might get an error so i'm going to show you here it will ask you uh, let you know that okay this object has no attribute aggregate array you come back to the earth engine here uh select e dot list and you won't be able to see the aggregate function but for uh image collection you will be able to see this one here e dot image collection dot aggregate array and that's why uh you need to convert the list back to earth engine image collection so very important and i'm going to just control g to get back to this one so uh convert the list you just need to put that inside the parentheses and then we should be able to execute to get uh, the cloud cover. As you can see uh, from this here, um, now we have the cloud cover for all eight images and each image uh, has a very low cloud cover. So 0.09%, uh, 0.13%, uh, 0 .0, uh, 0 .13%. So all uh, less than 1%, except the last one here is a bit high. And <clears throat> Next, we are going to add all the images to the map. And this one here, we will need a loop. So keep that in mind, uh, it has both been added. So I'm going to go through here, this code block. This one here, a for loop uh, is a Python for loop. So when you are trying to get the data to display on the map, then you will need a client side uh, loop. This is a uh, 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 server side loop. So if you're trying to use a for loop uh, doing computation, it's not a good idea so always try to use the map function rather than the loop once you have the data if you want to display the data on your um, map then it becomes a, a client side so in here then you can use the uh, for loop and so the count here we have eight images so for a uh, for loop in range that means we're going to loop through right so uh, the first one here is uh, 2013 so uh, you can use the images dot get right so the images here this one is a list it is dot get by index so uh, the first time here the index will be zero uh, zero basically means we want to get the first image okay and then convert this one to an earth engine uh, image object and we also set the uh, layer name so layer name image and then str year list index so the year list comes from here that we used earlier because we already unwrap uh, the list and this is the list right so get the first item that means okay so we are going to get the first image and I won't, I'm going to set the layer name as image 2013 so because index 0 here is the first item is 2013 and then I'm going to add this one to the map okay so earth engine object visualization parameters and the layer name Force, that means I'm going to set that one by default. Don't show the map. Like I don't show the image, and that's why uh, it's going to go through the all the images uh, until 
them are all of them are being added to the map so by default they're also being turned off and if you want you can just turn on so this which is the first 2013 all the way to in here 2014 16 17 18 19 images right so the last one here uh, no surprise because this one is a cloud cover of 4.61 uh, percent you can turn all the layers off if you want uh, so i'm going to click here and turn all the data layer off okay turn it back on this is the first one that without using the map function and this is the first image 2013 uh, that we use and you see how easy it is you just need a map function then you can do the same thing over and over again without having to uh, repeatedly or make do it manually so this is a nice way that you can utilize google search engine to do all kind of computation uh, it can uh, the map function can be applied to a list on image collection or official collection so um in in a official video i'm going to show you how to use uh, apply a map function to a official collection but for this one let's just deal with uh, image besides just uh, getting the image uh in between here you can do a lot of computations okay so what you need to do is figure out for example in here uh base image after you get the image you can for example calculate ndvi or uh, ndwi uh, vegetation index or water index you can do all kind of computation and then you can return the results so uh similarly you can also set so-called image properties so image properties um that uh, you can for example earlier we use the dot um can i show you here earlier this example so if you look at the uh image property called system uh, uh colon time start right so this is basically on uh, an image property that every earth engine image has but this number uh is not a, a human readable uh in t you cannot figure out like what exactly the date because this is basically a date and this number is so called unix time uh epoch is from the 1970s january 1st up to right now uh the second so if you don't know uh you can use unix time and epoch uh converter or maybe you can use this one here all right so the seconds since january uh 1971 and <clears throat> if you come back to this one i can just copy maybe this one here and then paste in and then convert uh it's going to tell you what this one is so this one is 2019 uh, uh march 17 so this number represent 2019 Mar march 17 and let me come back to here indeed right so if you use the sensor time it's march 17 but this is a string this one actually is a number so you have a number you can actually convert this one uh the format so they to um they uh display as months year and date how can we do that so assume that we have uh, um, all the images uh, within the image collection so we can again we can uh, convert this one to image collection let me execute and then you can aggregate the array right aggregate the array then you get all the numbers so these are all the numbers uh, in here and if you're trying to convert the number to uh, uh, months year and date we're going to do that for all the images right so again uh, we're going to use the map function so this is the image collection and we use the dot map and this one here we use the anonymous lambda function so the lambda function is lambda whatever x whatever variable and then you do something uh, to that variable so uh, lambda img in this case we're going to use img as the variable and first we're going to uh, basically we're going to set another properties uh, in this case we're going to use dot set so uh, dot set accept uh, 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 dictionary so within a dictionary you have the key and also the value uh, so this line essentially is telling google saying okay give me an image and i'm going to set a property name date and i'm going to uh, set the date but where does the date come from the date is going to come from uh, system dot time star i'm going to get this property and then reformat this property to year months and date so think about here uh, you get this one this one you can convert to a date object because uh, it's a unique time you can convert this one to a date and then uh, just do the reformat again it looks my very complicated but uh, you can look at the documentation here like e.date and within here you can pass in 
uh, number of date or string, uh, uh, number of million uh, seconds uh, since the epoch. You can also use the doc format, right? Doc format, that means you can format whatever way you want, right? Uh, months, year, day, you can, there are all kinds of format you can, you can do. Once you do this one, that means each image right now has a new property. And once you have the new property uh, date, you can aggregate and la la, this is what we want, right? We convert all the date variables in each image into this one. So this is mass matter. So in this way, we know exactly what date of each image is, uh, each image in here that we add to the map. Uh, if you want, we can actually add the date, a specific date uh, to each one here if you want. So this is how you can quickly use the map function to uh, apply things to every item uh, in the list. It's very powerful uh, because you don't need to write a loop. You just need to dock map and parsing if your function is complicated, you can de uh, you can uh, design a function. If it's only one line, then you can use the lambda function to uh, do that. So make sure that this one looks complicated, but you can look at each component right one by one. So in here, parentheses within the square bracket, uh, curly brackets, there's a dictionary. So the dictionary has two components: the key and then colon. So this is a value we want to assign, and the value come from where? Um, from the earth engine the image get time start and then you convert the, the basically convert this one to a date object and then you reformat the object and this is what you get so okay so this is all uh, uh this is just a small example uh you can do a lot more complicated uh computation with uh, earth engine object in the next video i'm going to show you maybe after you get the image collection after you have all this nice one how can you do the computation you're also welcome to maybe um <laughs> let me show you here how you can just change one line of call you can maybe get um other uh things so let me go back to here the base image right here i just use the first but if your area is a polygon they say you have a geometry uh polygon and that polygon might cover um, multiple uh image uh, uh uh images then you can use the dot median so median that means you, you're going to apply a median function uh, so you can look at my previous video uh, why we're using the median function to create a cloud free image and then everything else remain the same you can still get nice images for uh, your image collection so you can look at how to reduce an image collection if you want okay that's all for this uh, video i hope you enjoy uh, the video and i i wish you in the next one take care bye bye